What do you think of when you think of Marie Antoinette? Palaces? Cake? Let them eat cake! Although she never actually said this. Or, spoiler alert, the guillotine? <laughs> Vive la Révolution! And that would all be true. But to understand this painting, we need to focus on the 18th century Queen of France's status as a fashion icon. Welcome to Art Tales, where I share the surprising and scandalous stories of how and why artworks were made, one painting at a time. I'm Louise Emily, an artist working in the UK. To see the painting and supporting images for this episode, head on over to louiseemily.com. Now, let's get into the story behind this painting. Marie Antoinette was infamous for her lavish, over-the-top fashions and towering hair. You may recognise her signature hairstyle known as Le Pouf, which was a kind of crazy 18th century version of the beehive. She'd pile her hair up high on her head and decorate it with jewels, ribbons, flowers and feathers. These updos could be several feet tall. The more extravagant, the better. They even shoved model ships in their poofs to celebrate naval victories. If Marie Antoinette wore a style, the rest of the ladies of the palatial court followed suit. She had the power to make or break an entire industry based on whether or not she thought something was fashionable. Yet, despite all her extravagant outfits, it was her most unassuming look that changed the world forever. This portrait of the Queen doing some flower arranging is called Marie Antoinette en chemise or Marie Antoinette in a muslin dress. It was painted in 1783 by Elizabeth Vigée Lebrun, a famous female artist, women supporting women, high five ladies. Woo! This simple cotton gown made of thin white fabric is airy and loose, giving off a relaxed vibe. The full sleeves and softly ruffled neckline add volume. It's then cinched at the waist with a sheer golden sash, merveilleux. Indeed, to the modern eye, the painting has a graceful feel to it. It's a remarkably simple painting versus the typically ornate Rococo-era portraits that were the norm at the time. I mean, it's kind of rustic. Some might say a bit peasanty. <gasps> and wait a minute, she's not wearing any jewels or fancy stuff. <gasps> and that straw hat is only tied with ribbon and a few measly grey feathers. And I don't believe it. Her curls are all loose and carefree. <gasps> but she's the Queen of France. Whatever happened to Le Pouf? <laughs> this was a problem. The humble appearance of this plain cotton dress had an impact that reverberated through the world in ways no one could have foreseen. It flipped the textile industry on its head, causing cotton and the slave labour it relied on to boom. But how? Let's go back a minute. When, as an Austrian princess, Marie Antoinette was first sent to France to marry the future king, Louis XVI, at just 15 years old, oh! she entered a world of extraordinary opulence. The Palace of Versailles was home to the most lavish halls and grounds imaginable, and the people who occupied it dressed to match, including Marie Antoinette, who wore the finest French silks with jewels fit for a future queen. When her husband became king in 1774, he gave her Le Petit Trianon as a gift, an idyllic chateau in the grounds of Versailles. Yeah, that's not so little. She was given complete control of the estate. Even the king couldn't just pop over uninvited. Her and her mates would go there and kick back and chill out and did what any of us would do and got their favorite comfy gear on, or in their case, lightweight cotton gowns. Yep, like this one. So, by age 28, is it really surprising that Marie Antoinette would choose to be painted in something she liked wearing instead of being trussed up in a corset with wigs weighing her down? However, when the cotton gown portrait was put on exhibition in Paris, the backlash was immediate. Visitors demanded the portrait be removed from public view, but the damage was already done. Vigée Lebrun had unwittingly shown Antoinette as an immodest woman. There were many who saw the garment as alarmingly scandalous. In their eyes, the Queen appeared to be posing in her underwear. Oh la la! And then there was the fabric itself, which was problematic for two main reasons. 
Firstly, cotton was seen by the French as a very English fabric, so choosing it over French silk was considered extremely unpatriotic. Given the Queen's trend-setting power, many critics were also concerned that this would destroy the French silk industry, and as we'll soon see, they may have had a point. Secondly, wearing such a cheap fabric suggested a breakdown in the classes, also kind of ominous. It got so bad that this portrait had to be painted again in the same year to replace it with something less shocking. Here, Marie Antoinette is in a more acceptable French gown, or robe à la française. I'm sure you've already noticed that she's standing in the same pose, holding the same ribboned rose, with the same expression. But when we look a little closer, we can see some important differences. So let's see. Silk gown and turban trimmed with exotic ostrich plumes. Tick! Fashion forward powdered hairstyle, known as le hérisson, or the hedgehog. Tick! Pearls for opulence and added purity to counteract the scandal of the original portrait. Tick! Phew, she looks all grand and queenie again. Despite this controversy, the 18th century fashionistas embraced the risky, what they now called chemise à la reine, and its popularity grew. In fact, Marie Antoinette sent chemise gowns to a few of her friends, including the famous British style icon Georgiana, the Duchess of Devonshire. Yes, the Keira Knightley one. The Duchess of Devonshire. Soon, what was once seen as scandalous was now seen as a stylish choice across Europe. Fast forward 10 years, and even after her untimely trip to the guillotine amidst the French Revolution in 1793, the chemise à la reine fashion, or chemise of the queen, lived on. Vive la chemise! And, as predicted, demand for silk came crashing down, as the nobility's sumptuous silks and velvets had now become seen as enemies of the revolution, and cotton became the fabric of choice. A complete 180. <laughs> and that, my fellow art lovers, is how this seemingly innocent dress launched an elaborate butterfly effect with far-reaching consequences that the young French queen could never have predicted when she chose to forego her lavish royal wardrobe. If you enjoyed this video and would like me to make more, please show me that I'm not just talking to myself by liking this video and subscribing so you can get an alert as soon as the next Art Tales video is ready to view. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this painting and if there are any other paintings you'd like me to cover in future. Thanks for watching and in the meantime, stay curious!